Hello everyone, it's the second last week of our Camp Code and this week we're finally going to be starting our project of making an adventure game and this is going to be part one of two. And for those that have been following along since the beginning of all of this, you should now have all the skills necessary to code for your own adventure game, but if you do have a bit of confusion about some of the concepts, or if you've forgotten some of the concepts, feel free to rewatch our videos, the whole playlist for this these lessons is on Facebook and YouTube. Or if you have any specific questions that I don't answer in the videos, feel free to email me. I've left my contact information in the description down below or to the side, depending on where you're watching this. So we're going to start today, not in scratch, but actually with a piece of paper and pencil, because we're going to be planning out our adventure game and our adventure game today or for these two weeks is gonna be a space adventure game. I have my whole space shirt on right now. So for our space adventure game, we're gonna be making something called a state machine. And that is used to plan out all of the different paths we can take in our adventure game. And for those that are unfamiliar with an adventure game, they're similar to those choose your own adventure books that you might have read in the library. So you can start off in the same spot but depending on where you want to go, you can skip to different pages. So you don't have to read the book right from the beginning to the end. You can skip a few pages and the whole thing will still make sense. And so that's what we're going to do with our adventure game today. But instead of skipping pages, we're going to be clicking buttons to go down different paths. So let's get started by getting our piece of pencil or a piece of paper and pencil ready. Or in my case, I have this document that I have that I made. And at the very top, we're going to be planning out our space adventure. So first, we're going to start in our spaceship and we're going to ask our players, where should we go? And I'm going to give them three different options. We can either go left, go straight or go right. And these are going to be option buttons. So I'm going to have buttons to go to these different places. If we want to go left, I want the following to happen. First, we're going to meet a robot and he's going to ask us if we want to help him fuel his spaceship. And you can answer either yes or no. And if you answer no, we're going to go back to our spaceship and start all over again. But if we answer yes, we're going to start an event called star collecting game and we're going to help him fuel his spaceship with stardust. And once we finish helping him find all the stars, we're going to finish the game and go back to our spaceship to start over again as well. Next, if we decide to go straight, we're going to meet Ripley and his dog Dot. And he's going to ask us to help them pack for a space adventure. And here you can also answer either yes or no. If you answer no, we're going to go back to our spaceship again and then pick another option to go either left, straight or right. And if we say yes, we're going to start a new event called packing game. And once we help Ripley and Dot pack all of their things, we finish the game and then go back to the spaceship. Lastly, we have the right option. So here we're going to meet Monet, the engineer, and she's going to ask us to help her charge her robot helper. And here you have an option to say either yes or no. And if you say no, we're going to go back to our spaceship again. And if you say yes, there's going to be a new event, a new game called Robot Charging Game, where we help her charge her robot to 100%. And then after that, when we finish the game, we're going to go back to our spaceship. So this is the full adventure game. And this is our full state machine. So we start at the spaceship. We have three different option buttons, and then each different option leads you down a different path. So now that we know all of the different events that are going to happen in our space adventure, let's get started by going into Scratch. You'll see here I have Scratch loaded up already and I am already signed in. So I'm going to push on the create button at the top left to get our project started. Next, I'm going to name my project and I'm just going to name this Space Adventure. And then I'm going to clear off my preview window by getting rid of my sprite Scratch the Cat down here. 
So now I'm going to set up for my backdrop or my stage. On the bottom right, I'm going to choose a backdrop. And since this is going to be a space adventure, I'm going to click on the space category at the top. And we're going to start off in his spaceship according to our plans. So I'm going to use this spaceship backdrop over here. Next, I'm going to choose our sprite. So I'm going to choose a sprite in the bottom right. I'm actually going to search up in the search bar up here. I'm going to search space because then we get all of the cool astronauts and space themed sprites that they have on Scratch. So I'm going to make our main character, this sprite right here, Kieran. And so we have Kieran. I'm going to place her in her starting position to the left of this chair over here. And we're going to code for her starting position. So I'm going to go to my event blocks, grab my when green flag is clicked block. And I'm going to code for her starting position at x negative 105, y 33, like so. And next, I'm going to code for her starting dialogue. So for her first dialogue part, she's going to say, Hello, I'm Space Explorer Kieran. And then she's going to say, Where should we go on our space adventure? Just like on our chart. So in my looks blocks, I'm going to grab our say hello for two second block. And I'm going to say, Hello. I'm Space Explorer, Kieran, and I'm going to say that for four seconds. Then I'm going to grab that same block again and say, where should we go on our space adventure? Where should we go on our space adventure? Question mark. And I'm going to say that for another four seconds. And for our options, I mentioned that we were going to be having option buttons. So in this case, we're going to do that by using different sprites. So I'm going to go into my choose a sprite area again. And if you actually scroll down a little bit, there's options to use buttons. So right over here, the sprite is button one, button two, button three. You have a few other ones too that are not regular button shapes, but I'm going to choose this button three because that's the one I like the most. And I'm going to use this button to direct her in which way she's going to go on her adventure. So in our document right over here, we'll see that we want to either be able to go left, straight or right. So first, let's make our left button. So right now, this button here does not have anything on it, but we want it to say on the button, we want it to say, go left. So I'm going to change the appearance of the button by going into the costumes tab at the top left while my button is selected. And I'm going to click on the T so I can add some text. And then when I click in my button, a little text box appears and I'm going to put go left. And I'm going to change the color by selecting all of it, changing the fill. So I'm just going to click on fill and then change the brightness all the way to the left. So I make it black and I'm going to reposition it by clicking on the little cursor button here and dragging it where I want to go. So there's actually a trick to centering your text or t centering your whole sprite in this. And that is that you see when I, have this go left selected and dragged and clicked, there is a little plus sign in the middle. And when I go hover over towards the middle over here, you'll see there's a plus sign with a circle around it. And that is the center of your sprite. So I'm going to drag it and make sure those two plus signs line up. And I'm also going to do that, make sure every other shape in my sprite is also lined up by dragging this gray shape that's part of the button lining it up in the middle with the crosses and lastly the background over here as well. I'm going to line it up like that so that the text is right in the middle of the two boxes that make up the button. And that is going to be my first go left button. Next, I want two more of these buttons. I want one to say go straight and I want one to say go right. And since I've already done all of the work to make sure my button is centered and adding text to it, I'm just going to duplicate this button two more times and then change the text inside of them. So what I'm going to do is go to my button sprite in the bottom right, right click on it and push duplicate. And I'm going to do that two times to make two more buttons. 
So my second button over here, I want it to say go straight. So I'm going to click in the text, double click on it to change it. And I'm going to change it to go straight. And you'll see that go straight is a bit too long for this button. So I'm going to center it again. And I'm going to click on the back with my cursor button here. And I'm going to use the little dots along the edge to drag out the size of the button a little to the left and a little to the right until it fits inside or around the text. And the same with the background gray over here as well. There we go. That is our go straight button. And lastly, I'm going to click on our third button in the sprite area. I'm going to double click inside the text and then I'm going to say go right. I'm going to center it like that. And it looks like it still fits. So that works out without having to resize the box like we did with the go straight. So those are our three buttons. And you'll see that right now they're in weird spots on the preview screen. But we're going to make sure that they're all lined up along the bottom. First, I'm going to drag them where I would like them to be approximately. And then I'm going to line them up by making sure that the Y coordinate for all three of these buttons is the same. So Y again is the distance from the middle. Positive Y goes up and then negative Y goes down. So any negative Y coordinate, since this is pretty low in the preview window it, that the um, each of these buttons has, if they have the same number for Y, then they'll all be the same distance from the middle. So right now my go left button has a Y of negative 113. I'm going to even that out to negative 115 and have all the other buttons Y coordinates also be at negative 115. So my go straight button is just one off. I'll make sure to type in the correct one. And my last go right button is currently at 115. So that's perfect. So right now all of these buttons are lined up along the bottom of this screen. I'm going to go back to our code and we're going to start coding for these buttons. So when I push on these buttons, I want them to lead us to different areas in space. So what that means is when I push on these buttons, I want to go to a different backdrop. And also I want to um, start some new events when we go to those places. So for my go left button, I'm going to go to my events. I'm going to grab my one green flag is clicked block. And also I'm going to grab that block that says when this sprite is clicked, because when we click on this go left sprite, we want something to happen. So right now when the green flag is clicked, we want it to appear at the current coordinate that it's at. So I'm going to grab our motion block, go to X negative 150, Y negative 115. And when the sprite is clicked, we want to change the backdrop. So when we go to the left, we'll have to choose a backdrop for where we're going. So I'm going to choose a backdrop in the stage area. I'm going to go to my space category again, and let's just bring them to this backdrop right here, space. And I'm going to click on that and we're going to change the backdrop. I'm going to code for this background change when you click the go left button by going into the looks blocks and grabbing that block that says switch backdrop to and drop down, change it to space. And I'm going to make that happen once I click that sprite. Now, when I push the green flag, Kieran will introduce herself and also ask where we should go. And when I click on go left, the backdrop should be changing to this backdrop. But you'll also notice at the very beginning of our, um, our, our game, we didn't start off at the spaceship backdrop. So we need to actually code for that. So I'm going to go into Kieran's code. I'm going to grab that block that says switch backdrop to again. I'm going to drop down to spaceship and I'm going to put that at the very beginning of our code so that when the green flag is clicked like so, we're starting off at the spaceship every single time. Now, when I click on go left, we have coded right now the go left button. When we click it, it should transfer us to this new backdrop over here. And now that I've gone to this new space area, I want all of these buttons to disappear. So I'm going to code for that by clicking on my first button, grabbing that hide block, 
so that once we switch the backdrop to space, it will hide the button. But we also are going to have to hide the straight and right buttons. And how will we do that if they are not clicked? Well, in this case, we're going to have to make it an event. So I'm going to go into my event blocks. I'm going to broadcast a message when the sprite is clicked. And I'm going to call this message. I'm going to create a new message. I'm going to call it left because we're going left. So now when I broadcast left, I can make these two other buttons disappear once we receive that signal. So I'm going to go into button two that says go straight. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to go to my position that I wanted to start at. So go to X is one, Y is negative 115. And then I'm going to go into my event blocks again. And this time when I receive left, I'll put it down here. When I receive that left broadcast, I'm going to hide. So I'm going to go into my look blocks. I'm going to hide. And remember when we do use a hide block, we want to use a show block. So I want to show up when the green flag is clicked at the very beginning. And I'm going to go back to my left block and make sure I put that show in there as well. And lastly, we're going to do the same thing for the go right button. So the same thing as we did for go straight. So when the green flag is clicked, we want to appear at the coordinate of X 156, Y negative 115. And I'm going to grab that show block. And we want to grab that hide block as well because we want to hide that block or hide that button when we receive that left broadcast like so. So right now when we click on the green flag, we have Kieran introduce herself and ask where we want to go. We're going to go left and you'll see all of the buttons have disappeared. So I want that to happen, but go to a different place when I push that go straight button and also when I do that go right button. So let's code for where we want to go for those buttons. So for the go straight, I'm going to add a backdrop, a space backdrop. And when we go straight, we're going to want to go to this space city one, this one right here. Next, we have our button to go straight. So I've clicked on that sprite down at the bottom and I'm going to go to my event blocks again. And so when this sprite is clicked, I want to first go to my new backdrop. So as a looks block, I'm going to switch my backdrop to this new space city one. When I go straight, I'm going to hide this button as well so we don't show up in the city. And lastly, I'm going to broadcast this new message. I'm going to call straight. So I'm going to broadcast, drop down to add a new message called straight. And that message will be broadcast so I can code for the other buttons to disappear when I push that button. So I'm going to go to this button over here to go left so that when I receive the straight message, I'm going to hide like so. And lastly, for our right button, I'm going to go to my event blocks again. When I receive, I'm going to drop down to the new straight message that we just made. Then I'm going to hide. And lastly, we have our go right button that I do have selected still right now. And so when I click on the go right button, so I'm going to grab that event when this sprite is clicked. Then I want to go to a new backdrop, which I'm going to choose right now. So I'm going to choose a backdrop over here, a space backdrop. We're going to go to space city two. So I'm going to load that one up. I'm going to grab the code to switch backdrop to space city two. I'm also going to hide my button. So grab the hide block. And lastly, I'm going to go to my events blocks and broadcast a new message. My new message being called right, because this is the right button. And so for my other buttons, I have to do the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to when I receive the right 
broadcast or message, I'm going to hide. So let's start with our go left button. When I receive, drop down to right, I'm going to hide. And in order to duplicate this into that go straight button, I'm just going to drag and drop it into that go straight button sprite area. So click in there. I'm going to put it in a more visible area so all of our code looks pretty neat. And you'll notice that all of our button codes, we have um, four different lines or bits of code in different stacks, and we have four for each of them. So that each message we send or receive, we have a piece of code for each of them. So that is our first setup for going to different places in our game. And when I push on the screen flag, if I push on any one of these buttons where when um, she asks us where we want to go, we'll be going to a different place. So I went right and this is the Space City 2 that I just coded for. Next, we're going to have to code for things that happen at these new places. So you might remember from our other um, ecosystems lesson, this is going to be very similar to that because we'll be using quite a lot of events to make things happen at the times that we want them to happen. So. I'm going to click on the green flag again to start off and stop our script. So what do we want to happen when we go left? We want to switch the backdrop, which we have to this backdrop right here. And we're going to meet a robot according to our plan. So here's our plan over here. When we go left, you'll see that we meet a robot. He's going to ask us to help him fuel his spaceship. And we're going to give the option of either saying yes or no. So going back to our code, we're going to have to find a robot sprite. So I'm going to choose a sprite, search again. I'm going to search for a space again because there is a space robot right over here. I'm going to click on him and you'll see he shows up in our preview area and I'm just going to arrange him to the right over here. So when we reach this new space area, what I want Kieran to say is, what a cool empty planet. And then we want her to say, who's this? And then I want that robot to show up. So let's code for that first part first. So in Kieran's code, in this case, when we get that signal left, so when we went left, I want her to say those two things that I just told you. So in my event blocks, I'm going to grab that when I receive left block. And now everything I'm coding for here is what happens once I push that left button. So I'm going to go into my looks blocks to code for her speech that I wanted to have her say. And I'm going to change the text to say, what a cool empty planet. And I'm going to have her say that for four seconds. And then I'm going to have her say something else. I'm going to have her say, who's this question mark. And that's for two seconds. And so after she says this, I want my robot to show up. So now it's time to code for the robot. I'm going to click on my robot sprite. I'm going to grab my event. And so when the green flag is clicked, I want him to hide because I don't want to see him when I'm still in my spaceship. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab the hide block and my looks blocks so that when the green flag is first clicked, I want him to hide. I only want him to show up. So I'm going to grab our show block. I want him to show up once I get that signal to go left. So once I broadcast my left message, I want him to show up at his current position. So in my event blocks, I'm going to take that when I receive left block. I'm going to put that show block in here and I'm going to grab my motion block so I can code for his current position. So go to X 99 Y 10, which is where he's at right now. Then when, um, then when Kieran is talking, I want him to wait before he shows up. So I want to control. I'm going to say, wait, a few seconds right before he shows up. So when he first receives that left event or message, he's going to wait, I'm going to say six seconds 
before he shows up and then stays at his current position. After he shows up, I want him to say, Greetings, Space Explorer. You came at the perfect time. And then I want him to say, I'm stuck on this space rock. I seem to have lost all the stars that fuel my spaceship. And lastly, I want him to ask us, can you help me collect 10 stars to fuel my ship? And so that is when we can either say yes or no. And if we say yes, we're going to start a star collecting game, just like I mentioned in my plan over here. So if I say yes, event star collecting game. And if I say no, then I'm going to go back to my spaceship. So let's code for that. I'm first going to grab my looks blocks to say hello for two seconds and change that text to greetings space explorer you came at the perfect time and I'm going to say that for five seconds Next, I'm going to grab another say block, and this time I'm going to say, I'm stuck on this space rock. I seem to have lost all the stars that fuel my spaceship. So I'm going to break that down because that's a lot of text. I'm stuck on this space rock. I have lost all these stars that fuel my spaceship. And I'm going to say that for five seconds. Lastly, I'm going to have him ask us if we can help him collect his stars. So we're going to, he's going to ask, can you help me collect 10 stars to fuel my ship? So remember the ask block is in sensing right over here. And I'm going to change the question to can you help me collect 10 stars to fuel my ship and wait for us to answer so right now i'm going to click on this group of code so i can preview what happens so when i receive left you'll see that the yellow is lighting up he's waiting six seconds right now for us to speak and then he says greeting space explorer you came at the perfect time I'm stuck on this space rock. I have lost all the stars that fuel my spaceship. And then he's going to ask, can you help me collect 10 stars to fuel my ship? And now you can type in either yes, or you can say no, or you can say something else that will be the same as saying no. So right now that sounds like we're going to use an if statement. And that's right. Cause if you remember when we first did our, um, dinosaur, if statement, activity or lesson, we did something very similar. So now I'm going to go into my control blocks. I'm going to grab my if else statement, because right now we want to make it so that if the player says yes, then we're going to launch a new game. But if they say anything other than yes, so else, then we're going to go back to our spaceship and we're going to make all the buttons show up again. So first we're going to have to add our operator. And we want the answer to be equal to yes. So I'm going to grab my equals operator, change it equal to yes. And our answer block is going to be in our sensing blocks right here. And I'm going to drag and drop that into our operator. So if yes, then we're going to run a new game. But I'm going to code for what happens for if we say no or something else. And that's in the little else area. So if we don't say yes, what we're going to do is first change our backdrop back to the spaceship. So under the looks blocks, we're going to switch backdrop to spaceship that we are at initially. And we're also going to say, I'm going to put this before switching the backdrop. We're going to have the robot say, well, that's too bad. Goodbye then before we go back to our spaceship. So, well, that's too bad. Goodbye then. And we're going to say that for four seconds 
before we head back to our spaceship. Lastly, we're going to have to have all of those buttons show up again once we reach our spaceship. So what we need to do is make another event so that the buttons know when to go back and pop up again when we go back to our spaceship. So we're going to do that first by going to events. We're going to broadcast after we switch our backdrop back to spaceship. I'm going to drop down, make a new message. And this message I'm going to be calling options because that is what those blocks are or those uh, sprites are giving us our options. So in our buttons here, my first go left button, when I receive the message of options, I want to show up again. So a look block and show. And I want this to happen to all three of my buttons. So I'm just going to take this exact same code and drag it into my go straight button and also my go right button. And I'm just going to go into those sprites to arrange my code a little more neatly once I dump it in there, like so. When I go back to my robot code, after we say, well, that's too bad, goodbye then, and switch our backdrop to our spaceship backdrop and broadcast that options event so that all of the buttons pop up again, I want this robot to hide again. So I'm going to grab our hide and put it at the end of the inside of our else block. So if I do answer yes, though, what I want to do is I want to start a new game. So I'm going to go into my events blocks. I'm going to broadcast a new message and just like in our plan over here on the left hand side you'll see that if I say yes to the robot I'm going to start an event and it's going to be called the star collecting game. So I'm going to call my new broadcast star collecting game. Like so. So now let's code for this star collecting game. So what I want to do is I want to make a copy or basically the same thing as when I did my um, chicken catching game. So I would have Kieran, my main character, follow my mouse or cursor around and collect stars that pop up in random spots throughout the whole screen or in the preview window. And I want her to collect 10 stars and once she collects 10 stars the robot will say thanks my spaceship is all fueled up now and then I'm going to go back to my spaceship just like according to my plan. So how I'm going to do that is first I'm going to get a star sprite so I'm going to go to choose a sprite, going to search up star, I'm going to use this very first one here. And I'm also going to make sure that when I start my star collecting game, that the robot is going to disappear. So back in my robots code, I'm going to grab a looks block to hide after I broadcast my star collecting game. So in my star now here, I'm going to code for this by first going to my event blocks. When the green flag is clicked, I want to hide the star. I don't want to see the star until my star catching game starts. So I'm also going to grab the block that says when I receive and drop down to when I receive star collecting game. So I'm going to go into my look blocks now to grab my show and hide blocks. So I want to hide it when I first start my game and I want to show it when I first start my star collecting game. Next, what do I want the star to do? Well, I want the star to first show up at a random position. So in my motion blocks, I'm going to grab that go to random position block. And if I am touching my um, Kieran character, then I want to increase my score that I don't have yet by one. So I'm going to have to make a variable called score to keep my score. So let's do that first. In my variables here, I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call that variable score. 
Now I'm going to code for if. So control blocks. If. If I am touching Kieran, then I want my score to go up by one. And I want the star to disappear and create a clone of itself and have that clone appear at a random spot as well and so on and so on. I want the same things to happen to that clone. So if I'm going to grab my condition, which is going to be if touching Kieran. And so that's going to be a sensing block. If touching, I'm going to drop down to Kieran and put that in our condition spot. So if I'm touching Kieran, then I want to go to my variables. I'm going to change my variable of score. So drop down and select score by one. And since we have to make sure that we always start the game with a score of zero, I'm also going to set my score variable to zero once I start my star collecting game at the very top up here. And if you remember from when we did our chicken catching game, we have to make sure that this if statement is going to be in a forever loop because right now, if we just put it in like this, it's only going to check if we're touching Kieran right when we receive that star collecting game message. But we want it to be making sure that we're not touching or touching Kieran throughout this whole game. So I'm going to grab our forever loop and put that in our code. So now I'm going to test this out. I'm going to click on this code and it's appeared at a random spot. I'm going to click and drag Kieran. And it looks like our score is going up indefinitely because it is touching the star right now. So I'm going to drag it away. I'm going to go to our star code again, and I'm going to make sure that when you touch Kieran, our main character that we're playing with, it's going to disappear. So in my looks blocks, we're going to hide after we change the score by one. And I also said we want to make a clone of this. So another star pops up at another random spot. So I'm going to go into my control blocks, scroll down. I'm going to create a clone of myself and then I'm going to stop my code. I'm going to stop this whole loop. So what I need to do is grab that stop this script block like so. Next, I'm also going to grab my when I start as a clone block over here because I want my clone to do everything that my um, my original star did. So what I need to do is I need to grab everything underneath here, duplicate it, and put it in our code. Except I actually don't need this set score to zero up here, or else my score would be set to zero every time I got a new star. So I'm going to get rid of that. So let's test all of this code out. I'm going to stop my code and then start it again. We have Space Explorer Kieran introducing herself, asking where we should go. So we're coded for the left side right now. So I'm going to go left. She's going to say, what a cool empty planet and meet our robot who needs help to collect some stars to fuel his ship. So right now we're going to say yes, we're going to help him collect 10 stars. And so right now we have this one star at the very top. If you see it, it blends in pretty well with the background. And I'm going to click and drag Kieran to touch the star. So it looks like it went up to a score of three. So maybe the star had appeared somewhere within touching distance of Kieran twice. So I'm going to touch one more time and it just went up by one one more time. And so we want it to go all the way up to 10. We also want to make sure that we don't have to click and drag Kieran every time. So now I'm going to code to make sure that when we start this star collecting game, Kieran is going to follow my mouse or cursor wherever it goes, just like when we did that hen and chick catching game. So what I'm going to do is I'm already in Kieran's code. When I receive left, I say all this stuff, but now when I receive that star collecting game event or message, I want to have her 
always following my cursor. So first I'm going to grab my event block. When I receive, drop down to start collecting game. And then I want to forever, so I'm going to grab my forever loop. I want to forever be going to my mouse pointer. So in my motion blocks, instead of going to random position, I'm going to grab that mouse pointer option and put this inside of our forever loop. So now I'm going to click on this piece of code and it looks like we are following without having to drag and drop here and everywhere. And when I touch the star, it looks like it disappears. And right now I've gotten a score of 14, 15, but we want the score to stop at 10. So I'm going to stop this code. We're going to have to add a few more if statements for what happens if the score is equal to 10. So in our star code, Right now we have it on a loop saying if it's touching Kieran, then we're going to change the score by one. So we're going to gain a point and then we're going to hide and then clone ourselves and start somewhere else. But if again, our score is equal to 10, then I just want to stop this whole game. So I'm going to grab our if statement. And this time the condition is if the score is equal to 10. So that's an operator our equals operator in here equal to 10 and that is our score so I'm going to grab our variable score then I want to stop my whole script and we also want to broadcast a new message that I'm going to call finish star game so that we're able to code for other things to happen once the game is finished so first I'm going to make my new event by grabbing the broadcast block. I'm going to drop down to make a new message. And I mentioned that I wanted to make my message called finish star game. And then I want to also hide my last star. So I'm going to go into my looks blocks and hide. And lastly, I want to make sure that I'm no longer generating any new um, clones or anything like that. So I'm going to just stop my script by going into my control blocks, scrolling down and stopping this script just like before. I'm going to grab this whole new if statement that I just made right over here. I'm going to duplicate it and make sure that I put it inside of my clones. Um, code as well so that the clones will also stop once I hit um, the score of 10. So let's test out our game. I'm going to click on the green flag. I'm going to quickly click on the left block even though Kieran hasn't stopped talking yet. And then we're going to wait for the robot to show up. So we can say yes to collecting 10 stars. You'll see my score block is still at the top up here. And I'm going to also code later so that it appears when I start my game and disappears from the top corner when I end my game. So right now I'm going to say yes. And we see the star here. I'm going to collect 10 of them. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now once I've hit 10, I no longer see any other stars. So that's great. And I'm also going to want Kieran to stop following my mouse and also go back to her original starting position. So let's code for that. I'm going to stop our preview, go to Kieran's code. And so now when I receive that new message, that message that our game has finished. So I'm going to grab that event. When I receive finish star game, then I'm going to going to go to my starting position. So I'm going to grab that go to block. I'm going to scroll up to see where my starting position was. So I started at negative 105 for X and 33 for Y. So I'm going to put the same things down here. X negative 105, Y 33. And I'm going to make sure all the other scripts in this sprite 
are also stopped. So we're actually going to go to our control blocks, scroll down to that stop block again. So I'm going to make sure other scripts in the sprite, so my forever loop that was running before, is also stopped. And I'm going to put this just underneath there. So now let's test out this block here. So when I push on it, it looks like she goes to that spot right there. And we can test this out from the beginning by clicking on the green flag, have her talk a little bit, go left, meet our robot, say yes to collecting stars, collect all 10 stars that we need very quickly here. And here we can see a slight problem. Because we collected the star so quickly, right when we collected 10, we actually collected maybe the 11th right after that. So it did not stop because our score went above 10 too quickly. So there's actually an easy way to fix this. And that is when I go into my star blocks, Instead of making my criteria or condition if the score is equal to 10, I can say if the score is anywhere higher than 9, and that is including 9. So once I get to 9, anything above 9, like 10, 11, 12, then it will automatically also reach that criteria. So that is another operator. And it's the operator that has the blank, and then it has the open big alligator mouth, or more than um, sign and then it says 50 as its default so it's actually this one up here i'm going to put the score in here and we want the score to be larger than nine so i'm going to put that in there i'm going to get rid of these two i'm going to duplicate this block and put it in here and in here so let's test out our game again we're going to go to the left. Meet our robot and say yes. Collect all of our stars. And this time, hopefully, once we collect anything more than nine, so this one, last one right here, we reach a score of 10, then everything stops. I can move my mouse and she will not follow it. And then her score is equal to higher than nine or equal to 10. And now I'm gonna code to make sure that this score up top in the corner of our preview window only appears when we start our star catching game. And then when we finish our star catching game, it will disappear. So how I'm gonna do that is in Kieran's code, we have one block here that says when I receive star catching game. And so when I first start my star catching game, I'm going to make that score in the top corner appear. And I do that by going into my variables. And there's this new block that we haven't used very much called show variable. And I'm going to put this at the very top here. And we're going to show variable score. And after the star catching game ends, so when I receive that message of finish star game, then I'm going to hide my variable. So we have this block here that says hide variable. And we have to drop down and make sure we're choosing the correct variable. So in this case, it would be score. Lastly, when we do finish our game, right now nothing happens, but we want the robot to come back and we want him to say, Thank you, that looks like enough stars to start my spaceship. So that seems like a lot, so let's break it down into a few easier steps. First of all, we'll go to the robot's code. And this time at the end of our game, so when that finish star game broadcast happens, I'm gonna grab our event for that. So when I receive finish star game, then he's gonna show up again, so going to grab our show block and he's going to say so I'm going to grab our say for two seconds block he's going to say thank you that looks like enough stars to fuel my ship so let's type that out thank you that looks like enough 
stars to fuel my ship. And he's going to say that for four seconds. Next, we're going to want to hide again after he says that. So I'm going to grab our hide block. And then we're going to go back to our spaceship. So in our look blocks, we're going to switch backdrop to our spaceship backdrop. So grab that from the drop down list. And lastly, when we get to our spaceship, we want to have those options again. So we're going to go to our event blocks and broadcast that options message so that the option buttons show up again. So let's test this out by pushing on the green flag. I'm going to go left. We're going to meet the robot. And say yes to collecting the stars. And then once we add enough stars, he'll say thank you for four seconds and we'll go back to our ship. Now here's a slight problem we didn't think about. So I'm going to go left again after I already went for the first time. And we're going to repeat the same game. So we're going to meet our robot again. We're going to say yes again to collecting more stars. But you'll see here, all of these stars here are here because when we created our clones, we didn't get rid of our clones after she caught them. Instead, we only hid our clones. So all of these clones are all still hidden, but they all show up again once we start a second game. So there is a way to fix this. In our star code, when we start as a clone, Instead of only hiding when we are touching Kieran, so this block right here, I'm going to get rid of. That was right in the middle here. I'm going to get rid of that. And instead, I want to delete my clone after I touch Kieran. And also this block right here. When the score is more than nine, instead of hiding my clone, I want to delete it so that next time I play the same game, it won't show up again. So how we do that is in our control blocks, where we have our clone blocks, there's this option that says delete this clone. And we're going to try to delete this clone after we create a clone of ourselves. And we're instead of stop this script, because it is an end piece of code, you see that there's no little groove on the bottom here. We're going to replace that as well with the delete this clone block. So I'm going to get rid of this first one and the second one. So we replace both the hide and stop the script blocks with this one new block that just deletes the whole clone. So let's test this out one more time. We're going to push on the green flag. We're going to go left. And this is the first time we play this game. So you'll see now that in the top corner, our score is not there anymore until we say yes to playing the star catching or collecting game. So we're going to say yes. We're going to catch 10 or nine or more stars. There we go. We have enough stars. And then I'm going to go back to my ship. And now I'm going to go left a second time. So this is not when I've pushed the green flag. This is the second time I'm going left. It's the same dialogue because we have the same things happening when you push the left button. You'll meet the same robot character. But this time, hopefully, instead of having uh, 11 stars in the sky when we start our star collecting game, we'll only have one because we've deleted all of the clones as soon as they get touched by Kieran and once we receive our last um, score. So I'm going to say yes again. And it looks like it's working really well now. So uh, I don't have all of those different stars the second time around. I have one star that I'm collecting and that's because we've deleted all of the clones that we've made. So once we have 10 stars, we have enough to fuel the ship and we're going to go back to our spaceship. So this is 
all of the code for our first part of our project. I know that these lessons have been a bit longer, but coding for a game takes quite a long time. So this lesson and the next one will be longer than our previous ones. And if you do want to um, look at our previous lessons for more tips and tricks, then go ahead and if you want to take a look at the code for this first part, I'll be renaming this Space Adventure Lesson 9, and I'm going to be naming the next one that we do, continuing this game, Lesson 10, which is going to be our last Space Adventure lesson. And during that lesson, we'll be learning how to code for our next two games when we go straight and when we go right. So thank you everybody for being so patient for this lesson and I hope to see you all next week back again on Tuesday. See you all then.